Good morning and welcome to worship from Isle of Hope United Methodist Church. I'm glad that you're choosing to tune in with us online today for worship. Uh, a reminder, here in the month of July, we're continuing our online worship services while we're also beginning to offer on-campus, in-person worship for the first time. Uh, beginning today, July the 5th, uh, we have services at 9 o'clock. 10.30 and 11.30 a.m. And those services will continue throughout the month of July. Uh, watch the e-blast every week for a chance to register so that we can uh, know that you're coming and anticipate how many folks will be joining us for these in-person services in the month of July. Some other things I want you to know about right now. River of Life is coming up this week, July 10th and 11th, and we still have the need for some adult volunteers. You'll want to contact Shannon Baxter to find out uh, how you can volunteer and uh, what we need from you uh, if you're available this Friday and Saturday, July 10th and 11th. Uh, also, uh, we are opening up a Wednesday Bible study opportunity in the month of July. Uh, we'll be looking at the book of Hebrews. Uh, Wednesday sessions, there'll be a morning session and an evening session. And these will be uh, sessions facilitated uh, through the Zoom uh, social media platform. You can contact Tom Whatley uh, for more information or to sign up and get the links to join us in the study of the book of Hebrews in the month of July. Hey, thanks for checking in and worshiping with us from Isle of Hope United Methodist Church this Sunday.
Hello, and welcome to this Sunday morning worship. Thank you for joining us on the live stream, joining us live, or if you're watching it later, share it with your friends. Share it with somebody who needs it, because we are glad to have you here and to be worshiping with you. If you'll join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together again for this opportunity to worship, to praise you. Lord, you bring so many amazing things to us each and every day. Regardless of our circumstances, we have things for which we can be thankful for. But Lord, we know as we worship in our homes and not in your church, that there are many who are lonely, many who are feeling isolated. God, I ask that you be with each of those people that need to feel your presence today. And Lord, I encourage you to give creativity to each person to go out there and to be able to connect with someone in a meaningful way, to let them feel your presence, let them not feel isolated, and to let them feel loved until we can be together in the church, in our church chairs and in our pews together. Father, we know you love us. We know we are blessed. We know we are called to serve you. Thank you for all that you do for us. And thank you for giving us this amazing worship team and our amazing preacher to bring us this service today. Amen.
Good. 
All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful sing about your goodness and your faithfulness to us, God, that there's not a moment that we have walked alone, that you are with us. God, with every breath that we have, let it be a breath that glorifies you, that brings you honor, that brings you praise. God, we thank you for your goodness that runs after us. No matter how far we find ourselves, God, you calling out to us. God, we thank you. Be in this moment, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. We are so excited once again to come and be a part of this amazing day. Today we are coming, and I just want to think about what happened this weekend. Uh, for a lot of us, we came together as family and friends, and we celebrated the freedom of our country. But in reality, it always comes down to these special moments when the table becomes a focal point. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. The Thanksgiving, the Christmas, there's always the tables that we are reminded of. And I don't know about your family life, but my family life, there was always a distinction for the table. You know what I'm talking about. There was always an adult table and there was a kid's table. And at the adult table, I remember every Thanksgiving and every Christmas, every special holiday, we would come in and I was just hoping maybe I would get to have a seat at the table. But that table was always dressed to a T. I mean, they had the good plates. They had the good silverware. I mean, they had the glasses that were made of glass. And there was always the linen tablecloth and I also remember when I was sitting at the kids table, we had that card table, you know, the one that had the wobbly leg and it didn't matter because we didn't have anything on the table because the reason was we knew there was an anticipation that something was gonna be spilt. And of course we had everything plastic, plastic plates, plastic cups, plastic silverware, plasticware. And then we had that one thing. We never had any of the food in our place that we ate because they knew something would happen. But there was the occasional time that we got the bread basket. And we all knew that that bread, it was eventually gonna be a weapon that we were gonna throw somewhere. They knew it was gonna happen. And so today, I want to invite you to our table, that as we have celebrated the freedom of our country and we have been able to welcome you to this place today, I want to invite you to a table in which Christ has already prepared, in which Christ is asking you to come, in which Christ is ready to come and meet you at the table. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. And as we enter into this room, may we do it with humility. May we do it with humble hearts, recognizing God that you have called us into a relationship with you. That God, in the midst of the chaos, 
God, you have still called your family to come and to connect and to be together. And so God, today, may we take hold and may we step in and may we read the invitation that you have given to the table. For it's in Jesus' most precious and holy name we do pray, amen. You know, as we're talking about families, one of the things that we look at is we always have that one member of our family that is always just a little bit different. Today, we're gonna call that person Uncle John. You know what I'm talking about. Uncle John never really fits in all the time, always has the weird jokes, always dressed in a different way. Well, see, there was no difference in the time of Jesus. Let me give you some context of where we're going today. We're gonna talk a little bit about Uncle John, and that John was John the Baptist. In our story today, in Matthew chapter 11, John is in prison and Jesus and the disciples come into Galilee and John hears that they are preaching and professing the gospel. So he sends some of his friends to go and find, is this the same Messiah? Is this the same Christ that I met in the desert, in the wilderness? Is this the one that is to come that I have been a voice in the wilderness proclaiming? And they go and Jesus begins telling the story to all these people that are around in Galilee about John, Uncle John. And understand, John was not your normal person. He wore strange clothes. He ate strange food. And for a lot of them, he went out and professed a strange gospel to the Judeans because they had never heard it before. But in reality, John was the one that carried the invitation to the table to everyone that he met in order that they could connect to the family of God. Let's open our scripture today and and we'll hear where Jesus continues into this story. Matthew chapter 11, starting with verse 25 and going through 30. It says, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heavens and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned And revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And those to him the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. See, Jesus is continuing to tell all of those that are in Galilee to say, look, you have missed a lot of the invitations that I have given to you to come to the table where I am. We remember just a few chapters before, we are watching as Jesus is having the Sermon on the Mount and he outlines everything that's going on. And now he steps in and says, look, John, John the Baptist, the one that has been carrying the invitation has been telling you all about me. And now you need to understand that the invitation is wide open. And so as we begin to look at what it is and what it means to come to the table, I need you to hear this first thing is that we have to receive the invitation with humility. See, that's what made John so vital. Even though at the very end, a lot of people don't lift up the name of John, but John in humility gave everything that he had. And in this example, that's exactly what Jesus was talking about. Back to verse 25 and 26, we recognize that Jesus is saying, look, many of you have come and in your pride and in your knowledge, you think that you are better and know more than anything else. But I'm asking you to come with a humble heart, to come and recognize. He says that there are two kinds of people that are to come, two different types of people that Jesus mentions in those first two verses. The first are the wise. Those are the ones who are prideful and arrogant in their own knowledge, and they think they have nothing to learn. They think they've got it all figured out. And the second is those with childlike faith. Jesus said that they are willing to come in all of their humility, 
And they receive the invitation because they don't know anything else except for the love of what God is trying to express. So let's just go back to the table. So recognize where we are with the adults and the children. Now, adults, I'm not saying that you don't have an invitation. What I'm saying is we come to the table already with expectations of where we're going to sit. And the children just come and say, just give me a space. See, what Jesus is saying here is you've got to recognize that before you can sit at the adult table with God, you have to come in humility with childlike faith. You have to begin at the children's table. And we all have done that. We all started there in hopes and prayers that an adult wouldn't show up so that we could move up, right? But it took us learning each step of the way more and more knowledge about God to recognize when we were able to go from the children's table to the adult table. But once again, Jesus flips that script and says, no, in your humility, come to me like the innocence of a child in order that you can recognize the fullness of the invitation that I'm offering. So church, not only do we have to receive the invitation with humility, but we also have to receive the invitation from the Father, but we must first know the Son. In order for us to receive the invitation from the Father, we must first know the Son. So once again, the pathway that we are watching must come through the Son to lead us to the Father. The Greek word there is epikinosos. And I want you to hear this one verse again, verse 27, when Jesus says, all things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. Epignosos. That word was an intimate knowledge of it being exactly understanding of who each person is. I mean, it's almost like going back to our families and watching as we celebrated this weekend and we go, you know what? I can pick on my family, but you cannot because you're not a part of the family. I have an intimate knowledge of everything, of every story, of all the things that have gone on in the life of my family. And I have the right to pick on them, but you can't pick on them because we are intimately connected. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. No one knows the Father except the Son. And no one knows the Son except through the Father. That there is this intimate understanding to know him exactly that there is no hesitation, that there is no wondering if this is going to be true. As John was doubting in the prison, he, Jesus was saying, no, you can know with full assurance that I am the Son of God. And as we continue to receive this invitation, we have to know that this same knowledge is an invitation to intimacy that came through the blood that was shed from Christ on the cross. See, that's the desire that God wants with us. He wants us to sit at the table. He wants us to have the conversations. He wants to step into our lives in such an intimate way. But we have to be willing to humble ourselves and walk into the life with the Son. We have to realize the sacrifice that was made. We have to understand that we have to sit down and have a conversation at the table in order that we can be able to know the Father. That scripture once again says that Jesus will reveal to those he chooses. And that has nothing to do with the fact that there are only a certain people that can come to know God. But it's about the fact of the people that are willing to be able to humble themselves and get to know the Son. 
to say, I'm willing to spend the time. I'm willing to invest. I'm willing to let down my guard. I'm willing to do everything that I can in order that I can receive the fullness of what it means to be at the table with the Father. And for a lot of us, you know what that looks like. For those of us where the father is sitting at the head of the table, no one can eat until the father says the blessing. No one can do anything until the father sets the pattern. And in anticipation, we wait. But also in humility, we step into this relationship with the son. See, the table is always open. But for us to really receive the invitation for all that it is worth, we have to be willing to let down our guard. We have to be willing to say, God, it is no longer about us. This past weekend, we celebrated the freedom of our country. We celebrated the lives of those who laid them down in order that we could come into this place and have worship But we're also reminded that we have been given freedom through Christ. We have been given an invitation to the table in order that we may celebrate a freedom that lasts throughout eternity. But it begins with a simple conversation. It begins with a simple moment in which we open our hearts and allow the Father to come in. So I need you to to also understand that it doesn't just begin with humility. It It doesn't just begin with that invitation from the Father knowing the Son. But there is results of coming to the table. There's something that happens when we finally accept the invitation into our lives. And I need you to hear it. And it comes once again from verses 28 through 30. Hear these. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, the very first thing that we will receive from coming to the table is the fact that we will find rest. We will find rest from the chaos. We will find rest from all the things that have been going on. Did you see that? Did you hear it in verse 29? Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will give you an escape from the chaos that you've been living in. I will show you that in all these things that we've been trying to do, without me, you're going to continue to be frustrated. Without me, you're going to continue to be wearisome. Without me, you're going to understand that none of this makes sense. But with me, you will find a way to breathe. You will find a way to release the burdens that hold us. And you'll find a way from all of this craziness to come in and be spiritually productive in our lives. Not only will we receive rest, but also we will learn to find peace. See, peace is the next step from rest. And as we come to Jesus, we receive a feeling of tranquility and peace. Many of you may know that. Many many of you may also know that in a blink of an eye, something may change. And how do we walk through this? How do we fully understand how to live through this? And I want to share with you by coming and receiving this invitation in verse 29, Jesus saying, look, come and learn from me. Come and understand that my love, my healing, all of this is available to you. Let me walk with you and show you what it means. For some of you that have ever owned a boat, have you ever been out on the water and all of a sudden a storm rises? 
And inside of you, the anxiety begins to rise up. The waves start coming up over the bow of the boat. You start panicking and your mind just starts going crazy. You don't really know, what am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this? And Jesus, in the midst of all this, is saying, look, peace, be still. Jesus is saying, come and learn from me because this is what I need you to understand. I've already been through it spiritually and I've already been through the storms physically. I know what you are experiencing, but let me guide you in peace. Let me guide you and show you how to breathe. Let me show you how to learn my ways so that when the chaos arises, you can take a deep breath And realized that in the midst of the storm, the master is right there with you. I mean, for me, I would love to be in one of those moments and someone that has been doing it all their life come up and say, don't worry, I've got this. Don't worry, I've got this. And see, that's exactly what God is saying. He says, when you come to my table and you get into these moments of stress and you get into these points of of where you can't get out of, don't worry, I've been there. Take peace. And let's walk together. Not only will we find rest, not only will we learn to find peace, But our final point is we'll realize that our burden is shared. In verse 30, Jesus is saying, look, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And church, recognize the fact that this yoke was built specifically for each ox. It was built in order that they could carry their own load. And sometimes that load was heavy. And sometimes they needed a second ox to be able to come and help carry them. But it was still difficult. It was still hard. It was still something that for many of them pushed them to their limits. But for us, we already have someone that's gone before us to carry the heavy load. The reason the yoke is easy is because Jesus has already begun plowing ahead of us in order that we can take a moment and recognize the power of the invitation that we have received. We are never alone. You're never forgotten. But in the midst of everything that we do, we have a partner, a strong partner, that's going to walk by our side. And so today, I want to invite you to this table. That this invitation has been extended to every person that has been created in this world. We are a part of the bigger family. And regardless if we are an in-law or an outlaw, regardless of where we may stand, if we may be the Uncle John that doesn't feel like we fit in the picture, God has a bigger family ready to connect. And so today I want to invite you to once again take hold of those words when Jesus says, come to me, all of you that are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. I will walk with you, and I will teach you. Come, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. John carried the invitation to the world. We see this as it was prophesied that one will go as a voice in the wilderness, calling out and proclaiming, Here he comes in the name of the Lord. The invitation is set, the table is ready. And regardless if you're at 
the child's table or the adult table. Realize that God is there with you to connect with you. And through Jesus, we've begin, we've been given an invitation for eternity with God. All we have to do is take the invitation and come to the table. Father God, we love you and we thank you. God, in our struggles and in our failures, so many times we believe, God, that you are not real. So many times we believe that we do not deserve to be there. But in reality, God, in all of this, the reason that Jesus came, the reason that John, the reason that John carried the invitation was to give us the freedom to have the connection we need from the Son to the Father. Open our eyes, our hearts, our minds in order that we will receive the invitation that we may find rest, that we may live in peace. And God, most importantly, that we come and connect with you. Father, we love you and we thank you for it's in Jesus' most precious and holy name we do pray. Amen.
so many storms around us. God, you are the constant. You are the one thing that we can rely on. And God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. God, I pray that we'd be able to take what we heard and use it to better ourselves, to be closer to you than where we were yesterday. Thank you for all that you're doing. Be in our midst, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a great week.